person you fall hardest for might also be the person who drives you mad. Why? Because love isn't about finding the right person. It's about your brain trying to fix its past. And that gets messy. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, psychiatrist and educator. Welcome to Psychiatry Simplified. We think love is about chemistry or compatibility, but the reality, it's about pattern matching. Your brain is wired to seek out unfinished emotional business, not just romance. That's why attraction often feels so intense and why the people we love can trigger us the most. Here's what you learn in this video. Why your brain chooses certain people, how love creates hidden emotional traps, and why conflict in relationships isn't just normal, it's a sign of deep learning. So let's get straight into learning about the brain's love algorithm. You see, love isn't what you think it is. There's this big contrast between what you think love is versus what your brain's trying to learn. From childhood, we learn through what's known as reward prediction errors. This is about moments or surprise signals when reality doesn't match our expectations. This isn't just about school, it's how we emotionally process relationships. We're wired to match expectations and outcomes. So what's your brain's love algorithm? Consists of the limbic system, emotional experiences wire in early whether we notice it or not. Two, unresolved needs. If a need wasn't met as a child, validation or security, your brain keeps looking for someone to fill the gap. Third, pattern recognition. You unconsciously choose partners who fit your emotional history, even if that history was painful, simply because it's familiar. So when you meet someone who mirrors these early dynamics, boom, dopamine, instant attraction. And this is why we fall hard, the reward prediction error trap. Love feels exhilarating at first because your brain thinks this is it, the missing piece. It's a massive RPE hit a moment of unexpected reward. Brain scans show early stage love activates the same regions as addiction. Your mind fills in the blanks with an idealized version of them, but reality always catches up. And when it does, the very qualities that drew you in start to feel like flaws. Example, you love their confidence, now it feels controlling. You love their spontaneity, now it feels chaotic. You love their support, now it feels suffocating. It's not that they changed, it's that your brain is now processing the full reality. And this is what takes us towards the love-hate cycle. Why the brain resists change. Here's where things get tricky. Your brain wants to learn, but it also hates change. And relationships, they force change. So now you're faced with an emotional resistance loop. Your unconscious sees a relationship as a chance to resolve old emotional gaps. But the same habits that helped you survive before resist that change. Your limbic system goes into overdrive, reacting emotionally instead of logically. This is why love swings between passion and frustration. It's your brain caught between habit and growth. It's constantly asking, why should I change? Let's link this to psychiatry. This conflict is most evident in disorders such as borderline personality disorder, where the borderline personality organization is characterized by high emotional sensitivity, which means high reward prediction errors. This RPE system is hypersensitive. Every emotional shift is amplified. Intense highs, lows. The brain struggles to regulate unexpected emotional responses. Love becomes a battlefield for unmet needs and deep learning. So what does therapy do? It's about learning to tolerate emotional uncertainty. So let me summarize all of this for you. The key takeaway is love is learning. Attraction isn't about perfection. It's about familiar patterns. And relationships, they're not about completing each other, but learning with each other. The very thing that attracts you will challenge you. Love is about tolerating discomfort and growth, not eliminating it. No one can fix your past, but they can help you rewrite it if you let them. So what does your brain really want? To learn. And that means embracing the love-hate cycle, not fearing it. If this video gave you a new way of looking at relationships, drop a comment below. What's one pattern you've noticed in your own relationship? Like and subscribe if you're interested in psychiatry, neuroscience, and mental health. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege from Psychiatry Simplified. Until next time, 
Stay curious. Bye-bye.